Hi, I'm Dara, and my parents recently put my life in danger to serve their own needs. I didn't have the best upbringing. I live in a bad neighborhood, and my dad was always off doing shady deals with his friends, as he called them. Don't look at them, my mom told me if we were ever in the car when dad stopped to visit his friends. Don't ever talk to them. Sometimes, when my dad wanted to have his friends over, my mom would send me to my friend Kate's for sleepovers. I loved Kate's house. It was big and clean with a beautiful yard and a pool. Her parents were nice, and her dad always cooked good food. I wish I lived in a home like hers. And Kate was never snobby about having more money than me. She always made me feel like part of the family. Over the years, her home became my safe haven. The difference in our circumstances was clear, though. Like one day, we were looking for tape in her mom's desk, and we came across a large envelope stuffed full. It wasn't sealed, so I peeked inside. It was full of cash. Oh yeah, Kate said. That's the sunroom fund. The what? I asked. Kate said her parents wanted to build a sunroom onto the house. Every time they have spare cash, they put it in that envelope. They don't even count it or anything. My mom's just like, one day we'll open it up and be pleasantly surprised. I tried to act like that was cool, but inside, I was angry. My parents could barely afford rent. And Kate's family was going to add more to their already huge house. That night, I picked a fight with my parents. Why do we live in a slum? I demanded. You both work. Why don't we have anything nice? My mom called me ungrateful, and my dad said if I didn't like living here, I was free to leave, that I'd just be one less mouth to feed. Then they turned to fighting with each other, which they'd been doing more lately. I went to bed, and a few minutes later, heard mom leave the house. Where was she going at this hour? The next day, I came home to find mom crying in the kitchen. What's wrong, I asked. She just shook her head. Mom, please tell me. I thought she was still upset about what I said last night. But finally, she looked at me and said, I'm in trouble. A thousand fears raced through my mind. What kind of trouble? I owe one of your dad's friends $800. I was shocked. <laughs> she said she'd borrowed the money so she could buy a new dress and jewelry for a date. A date? I repeated, confused. You mean with dad? She shook her head wearily. I've been seeing someone else. At first, I was furious. All I could do was cry and ask why she cheated on dad, but eventually I calmed down. My dad wasn't a very good person. It was easy to see why my mom would want to be with someone else. The most important thing was that she was in trouble, and I needed to help her. They said if I didn't come up with the money, they'd hurt me, hurt my family. I have about $500, but I can't get the rest, and I can't tell your dad. I didn't know what to do, so I just hugged her while she cried. That night, I couldn't sleep. I was scared Dad's friends would come to the house and hurt us. I wondered what I could do. I had a part-time job, but the money I made there wasn't enough to help my mom. Still, I'd give her everything I could. The next day, I went to Kate's after school. We tried to have our usual fun, but she said I seemed down, asked what was wrong. I promised my mom I wouldn't breathe a word to anybody so I said nothing. Later, she went to the bathroom, and suddenly I remembered the envelope in her mom's desk, the sunroom fund. I pushed the thought away, but it kept coming back. They don't need a sunroom, I told myself. Why should they get things they don't even need, when my family can barely afford things we do need? Before I could think, I was reaching in the drawer. I grabbed several 20s from the envelope and stuffed them in my pocket. Then I put the envelope back. I tried to eat some of Kate's dad's delicious dinner that night, but I felt too queasy and returned home. When I arrived, I gave the money to mom. Here, I made this in tips at work. I lied. 
It was only $80. I needed to find a way to get more. I wanted to ask my mom why her new boyfriend couldn't lend her the money, since he'd gotten her into this mess. Instead, I promised her I'd get more money tomorrow. All night I tossed and turned. How could I have done this to Kate and her family when they'd been so good to me? I just kept reminding myself that they didn't really need the money. That they'd done nothing to deserve the money. The next day, I came home from school to find my mom scrubbing red stuff off her car. Someone had painted a giant bullseye on the side. Help me, she ordered, before your father sees. I grabbed a rag and started helping. As we worked, a car drove by slowly. Get down! My mom pushed me behind her. I crouched, my heart pounding. I felt sick with terror. Were we about to be attacked right here in front of our house? But the car finally passed by. We need that money, my mom said. Now. So I went to Kate's and waited for my opportunity. When her mom called her away to help with something, I opened the envelope and counted out $220 I still needed. That night, I gave the money to my mom. She hugged me and told me I was a wonderful daughter. She didn't even ask how I got the money. Why was I suddenly making so much in tips for a job that barely paid anything most days? I spent another sleepless night. The next day, Kate seemed down. When I asked her what was wrong, she said, My parents think someone stole money from the sunroom fund. I froze, terrified. I, I knew she was going to accuse me, and I wouldn't be able to deny it. She'd hate me forever. I'd never be able to go back to her beautiful, safe home. And I'd probably go to jail. They think it's my brother's friend Kelsey, she went on. That kid's bad news. I stared in shock. They didn't suspect me. I was off the hook. <laughs> Except now, what if they accused Kelsey? What if he got in trouble? When I went home that day, I was a wreck. And it didn't help that I arrived to find my parents in the middle of a screaming match. My dad had found out about the loan my mom had gotten from his friends and all about her affair. He accused her of doing terrible things to earn the money to pay back the loan. Just wanting it to stop, I jumped in the middle. I stole the money from Kate, I said. They both stopped shouting and looked at me. Her family has an envelope where they're saving cash. I I'm going to pay it back, I swear. I just didn't know what else to do. Dad looked at Mom and said he was disgusted that she'd gotten me involved. He shoved the stolen cash at me and said to give it back to Kate's family. He said they'd find another way to pay back his friends. Then he stormed out. Mom sat down at the table and cried. Knowing what I had to do now, I went to Kate's, gave her back the money, and told her everything. Do you hate me now? I asked. I don't know what to say, she said. I'll talk to you when I'm ready. I never expected to hear from her again, but the next day, she invited me over. Her family was all sitting around the table. I could barely face them. But her mom handed me an envelope. This is a loan, she said, to get your mom out of debt. You can take whatever time you need to pay it back. I was shocked. I asked why they were doing this. Kate said, I wish you told me you were in trouble. I thought we were friends. That's what she was upset about? That I hadn't told her, not that I'd stolen from her. I tried to refuse the loan, but they insisted, and made the promise that if I ever needed help in the future, I'd just ask. I apologized and promised a million times that I'd never betray their trust again, and I'd pay back the loan, ASAP. Things were rough after that. My mom paid her debt, but my parents began the process of a messy divorce. However, Kate was always by my side, and her loyalty has helped me get through this. I might never have known what a good friend I had if our friendship hadn't been tested like this. Hello, I am Jane, and here's my story. Like everyone else, 
I look at myself in the mirror several times a day. I mean, we all like to check how we look before we go out, right? However, I'm not going to talk about my physical appearance or my outfits. So let's switch the focus to insecurities. I believe we all have insecurities and some traits we wish we could change about ourselves, right? This whole nagging issue started years ago, when all of a sudden, I felt like I was completely worthless. Honestly, it wasn't all of a sudden, but I screwed up a lot. Do you know what's even worse than feeling worthless? It's blaming yourself for everything wrong in your life and in the lives of people around you. First, I wasn't a good student in school. It's true I didn't get Fs, but all my grades were Cs and Ds. When you're not doing well in school, at least you do well in other spheres, right? That didn't happen in my case. I was such a shy kid and socially awkward. I never initiated a conversation with anyone, and whenever I made a comment, everyone ignored me. That's why I decided to remain silent all the time. Oh, and let's not talk about my relationship with my siblings or relatives. My parents are great, but I always felt like they preferred my older siblings over me. I can understand them. My two older brothers are very accomplished and social. They have many friends and are praised by everyone in our neighborhood. The fact that I come from a small town perhaps adds to the severity of the issue in my eyes. People called me Jane Shane, and I never understood why. Maybe Shane comes from shy and rhymes with Jane. I don't know. But whoever made this name up is not funny. And I hope he or she is listening to my story now. Anyway, the failures in my life didn't cease. They even became my reality and the definition of Jane. Therefore, I hated to look in the mirror. Because whenever I did, I started to make up scenarios in my head of what other people thought about me. That killed me. I hated the way I looked and thought and behaved. I wanted to be smarter and more popular. Little did I know then, accomplishments don't come your way. You need to run their way and fight to achieve them. The next step came after I watched a motivational video on YouTube, which shed the light on problems and insecurities like mine. I figured out then that I am not alone in this. I still remember that rainy day in late December when I looked at myself in the mirror and said, Jane, you are worthy of love and respect. My life changed after that moment. I worked very hard to earn the life I wished I'd had. I worked hard to become who I am today, and that worked perfectly. I work in a huge company now, and I am happily newly married. My message is simple. Everyone feels weak and worthless at times, but if you do something about it, you can move any mountain and overcome any obstacle.